not only is the Lord using him in, in worship and praise and in the music industry, but, but also in praying and, and seeing some miracles happen uh, among the sick. So uh, isn't it wonderful to know that we serve a, a God who is a God of deliverance and healing and blessing, and, and, and he daily loads us with benefits. Uh, we serve a positive God. He's, there, you know, there's nothing that he will withhold from them that walk uprightly. All we've got to do is believe. He said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. And it's all in him. Oh, well, I could get going here. Dennis, you come on up. Come on up right away. Uh, this is Dennis Gilmore. Afternoon, everybody. God bless you. And uh, while Dennis is getting his guitar, let me just say that he was asked to play at President George Bush's inaugural address, and uh, he is, he hoped for many years, he started touring the United States playing professionally at 13 years old, nightclubs all over the country, uh, for many years he opened in, in Las Vegas for some of the greats, for Wayne Newton, and who all, who all, uh, Tony Orlando, Merle Haggard, you know, but now I get to open for God's show, hey, you know? hey. I'm telling you. Well, he's been doing lots of work with me, I'm telling you. It's unbelievable what God can do. I'm going to kick a little song here, kick it off a little bit before I talk. The preacher was preaching Sunday morning. Jesus came walking through the front door. See the blind could see and the deaf could talk. They'd all join in, they'd say, Gonna have a good time at the house tonight. Praise Jesus, gonna have a good time at the house tonight. We'll be praising Jesus, talking about Jesus, 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 what's his name, the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is his name. I'm going to tell you a little story about the church where I've been coming around. The folks around here, we really love on Jesus. Yeah, gonna have a good time at the house tonight. We'll be praising Jesus. Gonna have a good time at the house tonight. Yeah, praising Jesus. Talking about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus is his name. My name is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus is his name. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is his name. The mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus is his name. There ain't nothing no greater than God, I'm telling you, and Jesus, it just, it'll turn your whole life around and make you just be, have abundant of joy and love in your heart and soul, and you just want to give it out to everybody, you know, and share it, share it, you know. Well, um, well, uh, here's a new, here's a new song I just wrote to, uh, Put on my armor, I'm minister for Jesus. Save me from the devil and the fire of his hell. I go to that old rugged cross where I love on Jesus. I love on Jesus. I'm half a Christian and the fire burns inside of me. Yeah, Jesus, come on now. Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus, the Messiah for your Savior, the Redeemer from it all. Just Lord, I put on my armor, I minister for Jesus, help him be the hungry, pray on his children, go to the old rugged cross where I live on. Jesus, I love on Jesus. I am a Christian, and the fire burns inside of me. Talk about Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is his name, the Messiah, the 
good shepherd. Jesus is his name. Talking about Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus is his name. That's one of the newest ones I got a chance that God put that in my heart. I read Put On Your Armor, and, uh, and after I read that, uh, he put that, he put that in my heart and in my soul. And uh, So I know I needed some songs for this new album I've been working on, and the recording studio time's all been reserved. So I mean, it's a wonderful thing. I can't wait to start on it. Well, my name is Dennis Gilmore, and uh, I traveled the world, around the world for a long time. For 39 years, I traveled around the world. I played with Freddie Fender, Merle Haggard. I played with Tony Orlando. I mean, the list is on Wade Hayes. And President Bush was a good little thing there for me, you know. But and I always thought that I thought I always thought that I was a, a godly man. But I was working for the devil the whole time, and I didn't know it, you know. <laughs> kills me just to think that thought. My goal in my life now is to bring people to God and have them feel the peace and joy that I feel in my heart. I'm so abundant with so much, saturated with love. I'm so happy. God has given me so many answered prayers. Today I'm going to share a few of them with you. Mm -hmm. Do you think of me, Jesus, when I'm gone? There's not another love who can steal my heart away. Forever let me hear you say, Jesus, I love you. Got nobody ever said those things you say. Got nobody could ever do those things you do. Got nobody could ever love me. Thinking about Jesus when I'm gone. I tell him, my love, it's really this strong. Jesus, there's not another heart who could steal my love away. Forever let me hear you sing. Let me hear you say, God, nobody ever said those things you say. God, nobody. Jesus, look at the way I'm loving you, my Jesus. Let them see you in me, oh Jesus, praise you. I want to get down on my knees and love you, Jesus. Oh. I'm telling you, I love getting on my knees. I love loving on Jesus, you know. I got a chance uh, to go hear Benny Hinn's son-in-law, Daniel, who's married to Benny Hinn's daughter, and he's a friend of Shirley Schultz, and I've got to go see him three times. And all three times I've gotten a message. The first time I went, he said, Dennis, if you want God's anointing on you, he said, you go to the cross where Jesus is and you love on him with all your heart and all your soul, and God will put his hand on you. And I did it when I got home, and he's did, and he's been doing it every day. So I can tell you, go to the cross and love on Jesus, and all things are possible and will happen. It will happen. You ask, God told me to put it on my heart. He said, you ask for prayers, and he'll give it to you. 
promise you on the word. Stand on the word. You can believe in your heart and soul. He said to pray, believe, ask, and receive, and it's done. It's done. It's that easy. It truly is. I mean, uh, I prayed for a wife. I'm getting, I start my marriage class this Sunday. He sent me a lady. He sent me, I had a girl, daughter was her name. It's her daughter. She didn't love me, but I loved her just the same. 30 years ago, we dated and we kind of got split up. And me and Shirley Schultz prayed six months ago. Three weeks, I got a, a card in the mail at the postcard. It said, call me Stacy. She's been coming and serving the Lord for seven months at the house, driving from Sacramento twice a week. She loves God. We're, we start our marriage class this Sunday at the, at the house this Sunday. God is just, and I prayed for it. All the Christians have been praying for it. I got married when I was 18 years old and divorced when I was 19. And I met her when I was 20. And I was on tour until I was 24. And we kind of split up. But God kept her out of my life because I was I was working for the devil. I was partying. I mean, I was playing nightclubs and just, I couldn't get enough of it. When I was in Las Vegas, I didn't sleep for a year, you know. It was because of all the drugs and all the partying and stuff. And I thought it was all okay. But there was nothing okay about it. There was nothing okay. There was nothing okay at all, you know. Two years ago, the week before Thanksgiving, I woke up in the hospital. And uh, when I woke up, they said I had four-stage serotonin, carcinoma, cos carcinoma, cancer, and I was going to live three to six months. And uh, so I went to the doctors about th two months ago. It's been two years. I've been clean and sober for two years. I found the Lord 14 months ago. I brought 80 people, 80 of my friends to the church and got them saved. Um, it says here on uh, the 26th or the, the 16th of November, I was diagnosed with invasion of carcinoma, carcinoma, four stage cancer. Wayne Dyers, I saw him on TV, on PBS, paid TV. He says, if you pray for God to come into your life, this little spark, and accept him, he'll save you and heal you. And I did. It was on the 27th day when I was supposed to go up to Stanford Hospital and start my chemotherapy. When I got there, they said I was miraculously healed or misdiagnosed. So this is the paper. It says cancer, fourth stage. And this is the paper from... Stanford, it says there's nothing there. That these three doctors, it's not true what their diagnosis was. God said that wasn't going to happen. And it was. The devil, he was using me traveling around the world. And I played in some of the best nightclubs in the world, the best hotels. And he was through with me, I guess. And he left me for dead right there. And God came to me at that moment. He said, I'm not through with you, Dennis. I'm really going to use you. You like to work. I'm going to send you. I want you to tell all the Christians and all the people that are not Christians. And I want you to go around the nations. And I want you to tell them all. And tell them what I've done for you. <laughs> and and to, to see the paper that says you're dead in three months. And to see that you live. <laughs> It's, 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 it's beautiful because I'm not living in the nightclubs doing the word. I'm in the nightclubs preaching the word of God and telling them what he can do for you. And on the same night I prayed for my wife, I asked God to deliver my, my granddaughters and my daughter. I hadn't seen them in two years. When she came to my house at 5 o'clock that morning after calling me, my granddaughter called me at 5.15 in the morning and said, Papa, can I go to church with you? They go to church with me now and said, this is the greatest day of my life, Papa. My daughter this morning prayed for me to come to this meeting this morning. She knew nothing about the Lord for four months. She has been praying every day and found God. You know, God says, I look at all the presents and gifts he gives me. It's just absolutely amazing. It's amazing, you know, because...
It's things that I truly wanted from my heart. I wasn't a very good father. I was always on the road. I was always working. I was always partying. And that isn't what I wanted to be. I'm ashamed of myself man, for doing that. But I'm not ashamed of myself no more because if I wouldn't have done that and been all that, I wouldn't have found the Lord right now. Yes. You know, yes. I wouldn't have found him. I made, I made quite a bit of money when I, at, at one time, and I just blew it all on nothing, you know. And my goal now and my dream now is to open a Christian school over in Africa and to open water wells, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it with my money. I'm going to earn it for God, and I'm going to be the director for God. And so that's, that's part of my dream. And, and uh, my ministries at the house has went from 43 people to 187 people in 14 months. It's been growing 15 people. It's Pastor Tom. He's a pastor, but I'm just a minister, and I just love all these people finding God. So just to be part of it is, is awesome. Two months ago, I was, in, I was up in uh, Walnut Creek with Jimmy Delhart. And there were all the businessmen's fellowship. There was 25 presidents there. And I went with Jimmy just to sing before he spoke, you know. And Jimmy is a man of God. And when I walked in, he was saying, this is that man I told you about his anointing. And it was like having Chevrolet sell your anointing, you know. It was like a new car. It was great. Everybody just loving you. And I wanted to play in San Francisco. I prayed for that. And as soon as I got done and walked off the stage, Ted, the president from the San Francisco, said, I want you to play for me. You know, in three weeks I was playing in San Francisco at the Business Fellowship. And I just, I said, man, God, that is wonderful. There's Ted at the end smiling. And people were coming out of the restaurant. It was just, uh, it was, it was incredible. They say the Bible's a story. You know, they say it was a made-up story. You know, it was our, it was a, you know, Adam and Eve is where it started. You know, my God, it was a. I didn't even know last year Easter what it stood for. I didn't even know when I was at the church at the house. I didn't even know what Easter stood for. So I mean, I was, a, I thought I was a good person, but I knew nothing about God, nothing about Jesus, except He was real, God. I loved Him, but. And, and tried to think I was a good person, but, you know, I was just a, a, a basket case, you know, but, but now, but now, but now, I'm playing, I got to play at the Rock Church, it was beautiful, 30, 34 people were delivered that night, that was, that was probably my, my, it was unbelievable, it was a spark in me that just like, ah, oh, I loved it, that was one of my most famous days of being a Christian, 34 people got saved, oh, wow, and then I spoke at Clean and Sober Living for the businessmen, the, the Clean and Sober Living. And I've done that. 20 people were saved one night and 13 was saved another night. People that were delivered from drugs. And so, when God, I told you, God can do anything and all that stuff. It's just awesome. And to be part of it, you know, a little piece of it that he's using you. Oh, man, look out. I'm ready to go. So, um. Uh, Here's another. And it was sad, sad. You couldn't bear the pain. You tried your best on wrong key. Let's try this one. And it was sad. You couldn't bear the pain. You tried your best. Still you could change living in sin There'll be a price to pay It's all true happiness Starts to fade away Confess your sins He's paid for them all When he took the stand To be nailed to the cross Don't let your heart be troubled Or shame Lift your hands to the heavens and call out his name. No one left there to stand by your side. You chose to sin, but now you pay the price lost in a world of not knowing what to do. Sins of the world have gotten the best of you. Sins. He's paid for them all When he took the stand 
to be nailed to the cross. Don't let your heart be troubled or ashamed. Let your hands to the heavens and call out his name. If there's a will, then there must be a way. By calling on Jesus, you begin to pray. Confess your sins, he's paid for them all. When he took the stand to be nailed to the cross, don't let your heart be troubled or ashamed. Just lift your hands to the heavens and call out his name. Lift your hands to the heavens and call out his name. Jesus, Jesus is his name. Jesus, Jesus is his name. Oh, the lovely name of Jesus. The lovely name of Jesus. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful man. All the things that he went through just so we could go to heaven. <laughs> he went through that. I watched I watched the passion of Christ. And the first time I went over Jimmy Dillhart's and Joanne's. And I was watching it like this here. Oh, my God. I couldn't watch it the first time I had to leave. They said, you have to watch it. The second time I watched it and I cried like this here for three hours. I mean, it was like, and I had visions of him getting beat like that for a week. And so now I went and bought that movie and I try to watch it every week so I can feel that, you know, so I get what he went through for us, you know. And Peter and Paul and all those guys, what they had to go through to preach the word of the gospel to get it so we could be here right now. I mean, we are so blessed and so blessed, I want to say lucky, but we're lucky a little bit too, okay? We're blessed and lucky that we can be here at this restaurant preaching the Word of God without somebody wanting to, to, to get rid of us and kill us, you know what I mean? I know around the world, you know, their Christians are having a hard time with ISIS and everything, but, you know, we're, you know, we're over there trying to preach the word of gospel and, then, and they're not liking it and we're getting to them you know I mean we're getting to them but a lot of people are having to get hurt and that's sad you know but right here in the states where we can preach and talk about God it's the best thing I was at work the other day and one of the workers said hey why don't you quit talking about God and go get us some lunch man I've really been trying to watch my tongue and my mouth you know I'm kind of a hothead anyways and I got six employees there but I said Oh, man, I just kept preaching. I said, I'm really preaching now. It's talking. I'm not going to get lunch. He says, well, I quit. I said, then quit. Leave. Just leave. And any other time, I'd have really gotten mad, you know. I just said, leave. And I wasn't mad. And I was just preaching the word of gospel and everything. About an hour later, I went and got everybody lunch. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, Dennis. You know, I just... So... Uh... At Christmas time, I went up to Stacy's. Donna, I had a girl, Donna, Richie Wiley's wife. I was at their house, and they're not—they're not religious, you know. They don't know the word of God. She knows it, but she, a long time ago, she's seventy years old. This is Donna, and uh, we're having a beautiful dinner. And her daughter says, "Oh, Dennis." Be easy with this God thing. Be gentle. Be gentle, she says. I said, what are you going to do? You want me to put God in a box today? Is, is that really what you want me to do? You want me to put him in a box? So I just I just stifled me right there. I said, I'm not doing it. Not doing it. I'm going to go there and everybody's going to enjoy what I got to say about God. And we had a beautiful Christmas dinner. It was absolutely beautiful. So what he offers is so simple. So easy to receive. He only wants our love. He only asks us to believe. His presence is so powerful. How can I explain? He knows my every need. And he heals my every pain. So many prayers have been answered. So many needs have been met and he is truly saved me 
from the pain I can't forget. See, I'm always gonna remember all the hurt that I've gone through. But by the grace of God, Jesus saved me and you. So what he offers, it's so simple. So easy to receive He only wants my love He only asks me to believe His presence is so powerful How can I explain? He knows my every need And heals my every pain So many prayers have been answered so many needs have been read. He is truly saving from the pain I can't forget. So many prayers have been answered. So many dreams have been made. And He is truly saving from the pain I can't forget. See, I'm never going to ever forget all the things that I went through and all the things that God did to bring me back. So I just treasure, I treasure the love he gave to me and I treasure the love he gives to you because I love each and every one of you so much with all my heart like I love myself. I truly do. I live my life to bring people that don't know nothing about God or a little bit of my goal in life is just to bring them to salvation and to find God. That's truly what I want to do. It's, that's that's it. That's all I need to do. I've did enough other things in the world that that's what I want to do. So, and today I'm getting to do it. So it's another answered prayer. Hallelujah. You know, and like I said, uh, when, I, when I spoke up at the Businessmen's Fellowship in Sonora for Mark, it was the smallest gathering that we'd had and that night I'd always wanted a Corvette okay this is no midlife crisis I just never could afford one a little story here I, I put down three thousand dollars on a Corvette told him I'd pick it up in six months from my boss the night that I went to go preach the gospel up in Sonora, my boss gave me that Corvette and said, here's for your ministry, okay? When I, and, it, and, it, and it's not the Corvette. When I got there that night, I prayed. This lady prayed for the anointing. I prayed for the anointing. This is the first night I'd ever prayed for anybody, okay? This is a honky-tonk hero guy praying for somebody. I prayed for this lady to take the anointing, to do what she wanted with it, God's will. She could do whatever she wanted with it. She took that anointing home on Saturday night. She prayed on her sister, who was 45 years old. She drove from Sonora Sunday morning to the house, the church, on Coffee Road. She was bedridden for 20 years, and she walked into the church, the house. She found the pastor, and she found me, and she said to that powerful man of God that said that prayer for my sister. She was healed, and she walked in, and she prayed for me. Thank you, God, that she'd done that. She was healed. She hadn't walked in 20 years. Praise God. God, yes. from that moment on, I give, that's it, that's what I want to do, God used me like this, 20 years, miracles like that, you know, I tell God, I said, God, if I'm going to pray for somebody, please make it, praise God, find, find somewhere deep in my heart, and somewhere deep in their heart, that they can get whatever they need, whatever they ask for, God, give it to them, you said, ask and you shall receive, you said, when two or more join it together, it will happen, and so, I believe it with all my heart and all my soul. And when I'm watching healings, I sit at the house. I watch healings every weekend. When people come to the altar and they're prayed on, I believe, I believe it, that they're healed. And when they walk to the door, they lose the healings. I've been watching it for 14 months. I'm a, I, I like, I'm a people watcher. And I, you know, profiler. I got like that show, The Profiler, and what you're seeing. And what I'm seeing is when you people pray for you, you need to receive it, receive it, and then leave with the healing. And, re and then when the devil's going to come, rebuke him. Rebuke him and tell him he has no authority here. You've been healed in Jesus' name. 
And find, take them calluses off your heart. And, because, you know, we build them up in the world. Become like a child. When I was healed at 3 o'clock in the morning with Wayne Dyers watching TV, God did it. I was watching, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, watching a pay review TV, a guy on TV preaching the gospel. I don't, I mean, that wasn't me. But as soon as I felt the healing of it, I said, Tony, my best friend and I was in his house, wake up, wake up, wake up, Tony, I'm healed. Tony, wake up. It was like the 49ers got, or Raiders got a touchdown. You know what I'm saying? Wake up, man. He goes, what? I said, I'm healed. Tony, wake up. Woo! Now, they don't do this. This is what I believe it has to be done in the name of healings. That's how come I was healed. I mean, but with God and me, it'd be like saying, well, it was, I, it was better than any football game, anything, any gig I'd ever done. Girls screaming, any drug that I'd ever had, and I was healed. So how can you be healed and say thank you, Jesus, and walk out? And then think about something else. All I could think about that healing after I was healed. Man, I can't believe it. I'm not sick no more. I am not sick no more. God healed me. He did it. He'll do it for each and every one of you. Stomach ache, headache, anything you want. Anything. When you pray, my mother's got Alzheimer's. She's 90 years old. She's been in hospice for four months at my house. When we pray on her, Kim calls. She gets gathers peace as soon as she's prayed on. It might come back within an hour or so, but the peace is there and it comes for a little bit. Tell the devil we rebuke it and pray again. And if it works that way with somebody who has Alzheimer's, you know, when we have our minds, okay, receive it. Yes! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Then you're going to get healed, I believe. You can get it. Some of us get it. But I, I, I watched hundreds of people, hundreds of people Friday and Saturday and Sundays at the house with all the altar workers. And, and you know, they're getting, there's healings being done. Don't get me wrong. But great healings are done with great belief, with great belief and great thanks. Yeah. Great thanks, man. Yeah. God, you got it. I thank him constantly all day long. I have a direct line to him, like a Batmobile phone. Yeah. I have a direct yeah. line to him. I swear I talk to him a thousand times a day. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you for my car. Thank you for my house. My girlfriend, my thank, my church, my friends, my new friends. Thank you, God. I get on my knees. And when I get on my knees, I got on my knees the other day. He threw me into a, such an anointing. I was, oh. He does this to me for 20 minutes at a time. He throws me on the floor. It looks like somebody's flopping around on the floor. My hands are going, oh, my God, at the church. That's God, I'm telling you. I mean, it's way out of control. It's way out. I ask him to anoint me. When David DeVal and Ron Origin was up at the men's meeting, I asked him, I said, I want what you got. They're anointing. They prayed on me. They knocked me down 10 times. I said, get him up again. All I could hear was like, Jesus, get him up. Get him up. He'd go, blah, blah, blah. And he knocked me. I fall this way. I fall backwards. I don't fall nowhere. But I, that day I was falling. Fall forward like a potato sideways back ten times. The anointing has came upon me. I prayed for it. I prayed for the Holy Spirit to come. He comes. So if we just say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Jesus, you are welcome here. Jesus, you're welcome here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. I love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. The Holy Spirit. Gotten all over me. Jesus ran to me and took me by the hand and led me from the street. Thank God Almighty, He loves you. And he loves me. Oh, Jesus loves me. Oh, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves 
took me by the hand and he led me from astray. Thank God Almighty, he loves you and he loves me. Just imagine what God went through to watch His only Son happen to Him. Imagine that. Imagine fathers and mothers. That happening breaks my heart. Breaks my heart that He had to go on through that, that anybody would put him, a father through that, you know. But they say He had to go through it to get us to heaven. And so we definitely need to be grateful. So grateful. So saturated with His love. Just saturated. Man. I thank everybody for taking the time out today and to come here, the Word of God being spoke. Yes, it means everything to me that I was asked today to be here. So I want you to have a very blessed week and a very blessed life. And keep coming and celebrating the Word of God because all you Christians that are in the Word have been in the Word for a long time. I want to be like that 20 years from now. That's what I want. That's what I want. I'm only a year and four, I'm only 14 months into this thing. But I want it. I love to see Christians, you're lucky. You're so blessed. When you got God in your life, your lives can be so wonderful. Sure, we got ups and downs in this world outside, you know, but but in general, there it's really beautiful compared to the people in the world. We really have it made. They really got it hard out there. They don't even know how good it is in here. It doesn't, because it's really hard when you're in the world and don't know. Nobody ever came to me in the 39 years I traveled around the world. Nobody said, hey, Dennis, come sing the gospel. Come. Nobody ever talked to me about the gospel. When I felt goosebumps on my arms and my band playing, I said, wow, that felt good. When I asked the Holy Spirit to come now, he comes immediately. I swear to you, that's unbelievable. I say, Holy Spirit. You're welcome here. He shivers on me sometimes like I got the pneumonia. Oh, thank you, God. And when he doesn't come, I said, God, what did I do? What did I do to, to not make him come? Because all I want to do is what he wants. And so right now when he's on me, I know that's what he wants. And when I leave here, I tell everybody what my day was like. That's what God wants. So I wake up in the morning and I ask him, what he wants me to do with my days, and I tell him a few different options, and when I do, the Holy Spirit hums on me, okay, I'm doing that. And I've been praying for you, brother, I've been praying, I'm glad you came today, I really am, I really am, you're a wonderful man of God, I really appreciate what you said up there about men, at the, at the men's, about our wives, about how we felt with our wives and how we're supposed to, we forget about how we talked to them, we used to talk to them for two hours at a time on the phone, and now we just hurry up to get off and stuff like you were speaking. You know, I want to treat my wife. I want to I want to be the I want to polish her up and I want her to be happy. I don't ever want to disappoint her. I just want to make her happy and lift her up and tell her what a great woman of God she is. You know, and I'm so proud of her. and God's proud of her. And I thank God for sending me this powerful woman, new woman of God, you know. And Mark and his wife, when I told them, he says, Dennis, me and my wife, I talked to him the other day, he says, we knew she was going to be the one. I didn't know I wanted it to be, but when she started studying the Word of God, then I knew it. 
because I said, I'm not going to be with anybody who's not a, a good Christian woman. And she's becoming a, she's got a heart of gold, a heart of God. Oh my God. So I'm going to play one more song or something. have a wonderful blessed week think you're the blessed and the luckiest people in the whole world because God's on your team he's on your side he's here to build you up and lift you up and give you everything you've ever wanted pray for it it might not happen now but I promise you on the word it will happen it will happen I've seen it too many times all these things happening to me and then I lift him up my daughter is praying for me before I left today <laughs> That's a picture in itself. Take a picture of that. You know, she knew nothing of the word. She was deep in the world. Wasn't good. Wasn't good at all. But it's it's getting better. It's getting better every day. She, here's another good one. I was leaving the other day, and she says, Dad, did you pray? As I'm driving off. I said, no. She said, pray. I pulled over right in front of the house. Father God, watch over me. My daughter. She knew stuff. Did you pray, Dad? We got to pray before we eat, Dad. She's telling me now. Man, that's it. So I said, God, I take them pictures. Click of that. Hand it back up to God and be grateful, thankful, and love him for it. You know? When we show him that we'll do whatever he asks at any time and go out of our way for people and show him that we just really, really love people. Really, really, really. You know, the, 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 the harder they got it, you know, the more you got to love them. You know, you got to find a way to figure out to get them back, get them back, you know. But it's hard with anybody, it seems like, in the world, you know. If they don't know about God, oh, no, I'm too busy. Don't want to give my money. I don't know why I'm blowing, you know. But no, they don't know. I just keep on asking them, asking. My stepson got saved nine months ago. He's been in the house every day, relentless. Didn't have a job. Now he's got five jobs. Everybody wants to call him and hire him. He's working 23 days straight, roofing, you know. God came into his life and blessed him, you know. Uh, he's just amazing. I like that new song. Put on my armor, I minister for Jesus. Save me from the devil and the fire pits of hell. I go to that old rugged cross where I love on Jesus. There I am, loving on Jesus. Yeah, I am a Christian and the fire burns inside of me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Is his name the Redeemer, the Messiah, King of all kings? So I put on my armor, I minister for Jesus, help him feed the hungry, pray on his children, go to that old rugged cross where I love on Jesus. Love on Jesus, I am a Christian, and the fire burns inside of me. Come on now, everybody. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is his name. The mighty name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is his name. I, that was a song, my first song I played at the beginning of the night. I wanted to end with this. It's a new one that I just wrote, you know, so I'm really happy about it. So thank you, and God bless you. And may God watch over and touch your lives every day and every minute.